The first thing a lot of people make when they get a smoker of any kind is pork ribs. And the most popular method when you're starting out is what's called the 3 2 one method. Maybe you've tried it yourself, maybe you're here because you're either really happy or really mad about the results. And I get why it's so popular. It's an easy recipe to remember, but I always tell people not to use it. If you're not familiar, the 3 2 one method is really simple. You just smoke your pork ribs for three hours uncovered, two hours wrapped in foil with liquid, and then one hour uncovered but with sauce on. I'm not saying everyone has had bad experiences with it, and if it's been working for you, then hey, keep it going. But more often than not, I've talked to people who have used this method only to end up with really mushy, overcooked ribs. I have essentially two issues with the recipe. Number one is technical, and the other is more philosophical, I guess. The technical problem is you're simply cooking the meat for too long, especially if you're using baby back ribs, which are smaller and leaner. If anything, this method should be used on spare ribs, which is a larger cut of meat. And since this method often uses apple juice or some other liquid to wrap, Two hours in the foil will just be bathing those muscle fibers in steam, hi dog, overcook them and cause them to seize up. They can get a tough and chewy exterior, which is gonna ruin the bark, or the actual meat inside can just turn to mush, or both. My friend just tried this last week and he texted me. He said, hey, I just ended up with some rib jerky. So you can turn me to shreds in the comments if you want. I'm just saying, I've heard some version of the story many times. Now, here's my more uh, philosophical problem with this recipe. Every cut of meat is a little bit different, and the art of making great barbecue, I think, has a lot more to do with temperature, color, and texture than how long the meat has been cooking. And unfortunately, there's just no copy-paste recipe that you can repeat every time and expect the exact same results. But to me, at least, that's what makes it fun. Now, I know you're asking yourself, wow, David, how do you know all this information? How are you so smart? Well, when it comes to ribs, I get all my information from the least likely of sources, amazingribs.com. This website is just a bastion of barbecue knowledge. If you really, really want to dive into the science of barbecue and backyard cooking, AmazingRibs.com is the place to be. I'm not sponsored or anything, I just like to hang out on their website all the time because they have amazing articles, resources, uh, Q&As, and if you have really specific questions on what's going on with your brisket or ribs or whatever, they also sell barbecue rubs and cookbooks, a ton of great stuff, so highly recommended. All right, I'm gonna ruffle some feathers. Uh, a lot of people talk about fall off the bone ribs, like it's sort of the gold standard. And if you like that, hey, that's cool. A lot of my family does. But at least on the competition circuit end of things, what the real uh, barbecue masters are looking for is a rib that's tender and juicy. But when you take a bite, you can still see where the teeth marks were left, where that bite was taken. The meat should be soft, but not falling onto your plate every time you try and take a bite. If you want an easy, beginner-friendly recipe for a perfect backyard rib, go ahead and click right here in the description. See you next time, my friends.